Today I'm gonna to tell you what it's really like to live in Spokane County. I scoured the internet, all sorts of places like Google, Reddit, Quora to find the top questions out there so I can answer them for you. My name is Hayden Halstead with the Halstead Home Team here in Spokane, Washington, your real estate resource for all things Spokane. I've lived in Spokane for over 24 years now and I specialize in helping people relocate here. So I know you're going to get a ton of value out of this video. And if you have any other questions about living in Spokane that I don't address here, please drop it below in a comment. I occasionally make videos answering your questions. I'll make an entire video about your comments. So the first question we're going to go over is what are people like here in Spokane County? And as somebody that's lived in Montana, spent lots of time in Seattle and lived on the East Coast for a short stint, one of the biggest things I hear is that people want to find a community when they come to Spokane because people are maybe cold or unfriendly where they're coming from. People in Spokane tend to be a little bit more laid back in general. We have a much slower pace of life here than bigger cities, which I think a lot of people are looking for. Politically, Spokane is a very purple place. It tends to be a really good mix of both left and right ideology. So we're seeing a good mix here in Spokane in general, but kind of a rule of thumb is the city of Spokane tends to be a bit more blue, especially the closer to downtown you get. And then the city of Spokane Valley, Liberty Lake, Northwest Spokane tend to be a little bit more red as well as the surrounding rural areas in the county. We recently have made a switch from having a Republican mayor to a more democratic mayor with the democratic city council president as well in the city of Spokane. And you have loud people on either side of the aisle, which tend to be the people that live on the extreme sides of the spectrum, but uh, that's the same as in most places. But the majority are very down the middle and that's one of the great aspects about Spokane is the conversations we can have with split ideologies. The next question is what is the cost of living in Spokane? I recently put up a very extensive cost of living video that you can watch right here where I show some of my personal house bills and try to break down as many expenses as I could think of but this is really a sensitive spot for Spokane because many people who are born and raised here find Spokane to be unaffordable with only 30% of Spokane residents being able to afford the average home but many people watching this channel, thinking of moving here from Seattle, California, Denver, find it to be incredibly affordable, especially when they're able to work remote and bring their salary with them. I think as long as we continue to be an income tax-free state, we will continue to make a lot of sense for high earners wanting to live a more comfortable life in the Northwest, but almost every year income tax is brought to Congress, and so we'll see what changes are in store here in the future. The next question is what are some things that you actually don't like about living in Spokane? I think the biggest complaints about Spokane are the crime and homelessness issues we are facing here, the winter weather, if you're not in love with the snow and find yourself getting stuck inside all winter long, and I would throw in the lack of high paying kind of white collar jobs. Crime and homelessness has definitely gotten worse over the years and is more apparent than I remember growing up. There's definitely a fentanyl problem in our area and it's hard to know what the best solution is to get people People off of the street. Uh, they have to be wanting to get the help too. We can't really force them to, to get the help that they might need. What I say often is to check out the Spokane County crime map to find a neighborhood that might fit your level of comfortability. And that if you are moving here from a place like LA, Seattle, or Portland, our issues aren't any worse or really anywhere near as bad as those areas. So again, Spokane looks like a haven to our outsiders, but a place that is kind of falling apart to the people that have been here. Now, if you find yourself stuck inside during the winter, Spokane will kind of suck. It really does get dark. Um, uh, like most places on the West Coast, it can be gloomy in the winter. And this winter, it was completely dry and pretty warm on Christmas. And then in the last week, it's been 18 below zero and we've had 10 inches of snow, freezing rain, and I-90, our main interstate, was completely shut down because it was so icy. You have to be willing to brave the cold even if you aren't a snowboarder or skier to get out and enjoy some of the amazing events going on throughout the winter. There's always live music to see, places to support local makers and artists and go play some indoor golf or drink some beer while watching the Zags at your favorite local brewery. And then it's just true that Spokane does lack some high paying jobs. There are very few large corporations that call Spokane home. and so unless you're a doctor, lawyer, accountant, or something in that realm, it can be a little bit more difficult to find a job you'll be interested in. The tech industry is growing slightly in our area, but it's mostly made up of small startups. And so if you are in the tech industry, it can be hard to find a well-paying job. Most of my clients that are in tech usually work remote anyway. The amazing part is that after helping a few dozen people relocate to Spokane, I've only had one decide it wasn't for them and she ended up moving to an even more rural town in Michigan. So it wasn't the lack of things to do, it was that Spokane was actually too big for her. 
The next question is, what are the best neighborhoods in Spokane? And this is one where I've done videos on the best and the worst neighborhoods in Spokane, and I've done deep dives on specific neighborhoods. So I would definitely recommend checking out those videos. They're going to be a lot uh, in a lot more detail. One of the biggest factors in figuring out what is a good neighborhood or not for you is going to be affordability. And so how much do you have to spend, whether it's a rental or purchasing a home, that's going to be one of your biggest limiting factors. Another thing to consider is do you want a new home or an older craftsman home? Do you want a home on five acres or a brand new construction community with low maintenance? It's going to really change like what you're after. And if you wanted something more walkable, I would suggest the Perry District, Garland, or the Kendall Yards. And if you want new construction, you'll likely be in North Spokane or in the Valley. If you want an older home with some charm, you'll likely be in the South Hill or in the Emerson Garfield neighborhood. And if you wanted that five to 10 acres, you just need to be 20 to 30 minutes outside of the city limits in areas like Spangle and Valley Ford to the south and Deer Park and Elk to the north. So this is just kind of a general idea, but to really find out what neighborhood makes sense and what doesn't make sense to you, we can actually jump on a discovery call. Like I said, we help people relocate here to Spokane and really specialize in relocation. So in the description below, I have a link for a discovery session. You can book a time on my calendar where we hop on a Zoom call completely free and I just talk about the different neighborhoods for you. So check that out and we can do specialized information specifically for you to see what makes sense based on your budget and what you're looking for. We've already touched on this next one a little bit, but what is the weather like in Spokane? I know everyone thinks of Spokane as being a place with all four seasons, with comfortable summers and mild winters, but it can really be a little unpredictable around here. Until the beginning of January this year, it was bone dry and relatively warm. And now we've seen temperatures far below zero with tons of snow. And so I wouldn't be surprised if this is a late year, late winter year with snow all the way through April. Last year, we had quite a bit of snow for almost five solid months. And the year before that, we had very little. So it's very inconsistent and often it feels like we skip over fall and spring. They feel like they're maybe only a month long some years and there's winters where the trees don't even have time to lose their leaves and you end up doing all your raking in the springtime because they get stuck to the trees because it's so cold. You really do just need to have the right wardrobe for any occasion. There's that saying that there's no bad weather, it's just bad clothing. And if you're not properly prepared for any given day, then you can get caught in the cold rain in the morning and be in a t-shirt by the afternoon when the sun comes out. So making sure that you're dressing in layers is important. The next question is what is there to do in Spokane? Now, are we a major city with major city amenities? No, but are we close? We definitely are. We have tons of community events to take part in. There's tons of public parks, hiking trails, music, art, great restaurants. I always ask clients when they're visiting Spokane or thinking about moving to Spokane, what activities they like to do, where they're moving, they're currently living. And the majority of the time, there is some variation of that here in Spokane. We have tons of clubs, communities to be a part of, from running clubs to storytelling to board games. And if you wanna attend a baseball game or hockey, soccer or basketball, we've got that. And you can fly to Seattle and back in the same day to go see the Seahawks. One of the biggest complaints I hear about the food scene from people moving from a bigger city is a lack of super authentic Asian food like Thai, Chinese, or Korean, or something similar. The next question is how are the schools in Spokane? And this is a question I get all the time, especially from people obviously with families moving here to Spokane. They need to know what school districts should they be in or shouldn't they be in. And while I can't tell you exactly which ones you should and shouldn't be in, I can say there are some really great resources out there like niche.com and actually Redfin uh, as well integrates with greatschools.org, which there are some challenges with that. But if you're searching for places you can find them on Redfin and actually search based on what they believe the rating for that school is. So these are some really helpful resources for you. I'll put a video out soon about the best schools in the areas, but I'm gonna be using resources like niche.com uh, when I do that. So you can look it up now if you need that information sooner. The next question is how is traffic and specifically public transportation? And so this is an interesting question because actually what I tend to find is a lot of people assume that they expect the traffic to be very like super minimal, which is for the most part, it is, and again, compared to larger cities, it's really not that bad. A 30 minute commute is a pretty rare thing around here and you have a lot of options to make your commute a lot faster. But things have really changed over the last decade and Spokane really does have a rush hour now. You're not going to add an additional like hour to your trip, but the worst I've really seen is like 10 to 15 minutes. Most traffic is going north to south because there's no highway currently, but by 2030, we'll have the north-south freeway, which will help that uh, with that a little bit. 
going up division right now is the, the main north south road is pretty terrible during rush hours tons of stop and go traffic lots of stoplights things like that eventually once the north south freeway is open they'd actually like to remove a lane from division on both sides and make those dedicated bus lanes so they can run more buses up and down division to help more people use the transit system i've also said recently that spokane is not the most bike friendly place if you can travel along the centennial trail or live close to downtown then it's not that bad but biking up to the south hill or out to the valley is really not an option unless you're like pretty hardcore about it so it's just not super easy to have a bike friendly commute next up is how is the real estate market what is the real estate market like i'm doing videos like this all the time so i'll definitely put one of those here as well where i go into detail on what the housing market is currently like but for most people moving from most areas to spokane they believe spokane is going to be a super affordable option but with the median home price rising, it's not such an easy choice now. I think one thing that Spokane is missing is better options for new construction in our area. Many of the builders have to build in areas that aren't very developed yet and are further away from amenities. So you're really relying on the low maintenance and incentives they're offering to make it make sense. But it's just like, you're not gonna get much of a community unless it was built by like Greenstone. So we need a lot more builders in Spokane. Even mar markets close to us like the Tri-Cities in Vancouver have way more builder options, just more competition among builders, making the quality of the build go up. So we're, I definitely think we're missing out on that. Our starting price point under 350,000 is highly competitive with multiple offers still being relatively common and a 4,000 square foot home will still run you $750,000 or more in our area. So, But what you probably need to do is just start by looking on Redfin or Zillow and seeing what is available, then actually talking to somebody like a, talk to a professional uh, again we can have a discovery session you can use the link down below and we can do go into more detail on your budget what you're looking for and if that's realistic or not realistic in your price point point. and the final question is Spokane actually worth it long term is Spokane a good place to move to of course I'm pretty biased on this uh, scenario but I'm gonna say absolutely purely based on the number of people moving here and the migration we're going to continue having we're going to continue seeing people moving here to find a more affordable lifestyle Spokane is like Seattle in the, like the 1980s it's relatively sleepy in an affordable big city and I think if we get the right investments and the right progression in our infrastructure then we're set up for a large growth in our area we have about 800,000 people in the entire Coeur d'Alene and Spokane metro area and it's estimated to be over a million in the next 15 years so if you want your paycheck to go a little bit further than when you're where you're currently at and a slower pace of life great community then Spokane is definitely for you and if you are even considering moving to Spokane you want to make sure to avoid the most common mistakes that people make while moving and really plan out your move and that's exactly why I made this video right here you should go check it out thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video